Scorpio. Welcome and welcome back to Heretic Owl. We are talking about August, which is crazy to me, but here we are. I hope that July has been and is treating you well. Um, I'm releasing these videos a little differently than before. Um, I'm releasing them basically as I get them done versus before um, I would do, I would just get all of them done and release them all at one time. But I don't know, after the July readings, I was just like, you know, I don't, I don't want to do it that way anymore. <laughs> So we'll go wherever the energy takes us, as long as it makes us feel good. So we're trying this out. Um, we are looking for a message for Scorpio for August. We don't take jumpers. I'm just going to shuffle a bunch of times. It's really just kind of like a feeling. <laughs> of when... To stop. Okay. Nope. Every time, like, I am, <laughs> okay, <laughs> for Scorpio. Here we go. I almost... almost started taking cards off the bottom of the deck and we'll talk about the cards at the bottom of the deck anyway but whoa whoa okay. I was saying whoa because of <laughs> how many major arcanas we have out here All of them. <laughs> These, well, not all of the major arcana. All of the cards except for this lovely Ten of Swords here. You know what's interesting too is Cancer had the same exact combo in the same exact spot. So there might be something in the Cancer reading for you. You might have Cancer in your um, in your chart. Um, maybe not, honestly. It doesn't even have to be that, but it is just interesting out of, you know, all of the combinations, right? Anyway, so <laughs> the Ten of Swords. Swords having to do with our thoughts, how we perceive our realities. I see them as being the card of ego also because that's generally where we hear our ego. And our ego is generally responsible for our perceptions and reality, right? And when we talk about the Ten of Swords, Tens are completions, right? After the Ten, you go back to the Ace, basically. And the Ten of Swords is generally depicted in this manner, where there's Ten, ten Swords sticking out of their back. And really, I mean, it would depend on your situation, of course. I mean, like, this could be how you're feeling. 
you know, you may be feeling like you have been backstabbed or, you know, just kind of bamboozled. I've been using that word a lot lately. But this is also almost about like taking yourself out by the way that you are either thinking about yourself, thinking about a situation, you know, because this would also be like overanalyzing. And you know how like we almost just kind of get to a point where we overanalyze ourselves right out of, of the thing. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm even just kind of looking at there's this rose that they're holding on to. And it's almost like, you know, this rose is like the symbol of hope. It could be, of course, you, I mean, you give roses to people that you love. So it could have to do with a relationship. I feel like relationship stuff is coming up a lot. And I don't personally do relationship readings, but all of a sudden I am. <laughs> And, you know, I mean, if it shows up, I'm going to talk about it. So, you know, that could be, you know, your perception of a relationship, your perception of what is possible in a relationship. It could, like I said, it could even have just been your hope. And then we have the hanged man down here. And this could be, you know, something that has been going on for some time. Because, you know, the hanged man talks about suspension. The purpose of hanging upside down is to see things from a different perspective, but their eyes aren't even open. It almost kind of looks like they're sleeping in this card. There's also, you know, this feeling of not wanting to see either the truth or not even wanting to see a different perspective. It's kind of like, you know, you... Have your mind made up here. There's also, you know, there's a couple things like there's this level of feeling supported in this card just by the way that these ribbons are wrapped around this figure like you know there there is this feeling of surrender however there is also this feeling that I'm getting out of this specific reading that you're keeping yourself here because it's kind of like you know you could get out of this if you wanted to, and there seems to be an opportunity to do exactly that, to get out of it. I mean, this could be you and somebody else, you know? I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a romantic relationship. It could be platonic. It could be business.
because it's interesting how like the figure in this card looks like this figure and this figure here. So there could be somebody waiting for you to either make your mind up, make a decision, communicate even. Because then, you know, we move on to this chariot card. And the chariot is a card of um, cancer. Could be a cancer. This is um, Capricorn, Mercury, I think, or Gemini, Taurus, Aquarius. <laughs> um, doesn't have to be. I'm just throwing it out there. Who is the hanged man? Water. So then we have the chariot, which is fast moving, right? It's almost like there's this feeling on this card specifically where it's almost like being divinely guided. But also, you know, we have this dark and light horse here, which talks about the dark and light energies, right? Like shadow and light, however you want to, you know, kind of put that. And it's almost like, you know, getting them under control or getting that under control. And by getting it under control, it's, it's like, you know, not one thing isn't, um, in control. It's like that whole, you know, like too much of something. Um, isn't a good thing. But also, you know, like just balancing those energies, like recognizing that they're both going to be there. And not allowing them to, you know, kind of stop you or even shake your faith or hope, like I was saying with this rose there. So we go from this 10 of swords, right? Like in just, you know, being on the ground with all these swords in your back to the chariot, right? <laughs> like moving forward, going for it. That's like the ultimate glow up, right? And then the devil card here. And the devil talks about those things that control us because, you know, there's this devil looking character back here. And it looks like they're playing, you know, an instrument. It's like, you know, distractions. The things that we use to numb out, you know, it can be addictions. And of course, I mean, addictions can be anything to substance, um, you know, shopping, um, gambling, you know, again, you know, like addicted to being distracted. So it's interesting. So, you know, it's almost like this is kind of, this feels a bit rock bottomy. And this would be facing that. Because, like I said, like this figure looks like this and this.
And then on this side, we have the Magician and the Hierophant. This could be some sort of assistance or help coming in. Because the Magician talks about resources and um, almost kind of calling in Oh, I, I like, of course, the phrase is like leaving my my brain now. <laughs> but the magician has everything that they need. It's literally just a matter of recognizing that for one thing. And for two, you know, calling in those resources. There's a cup here, the sword, pentacle, the wand, right? So there's everything at their disposal. And it's really, it's a matter of discovering that and using those elements to bring something to reality. And the Hierophant is the card of, you know, it, it talks about tradition, like traditional institutions. It can talk about education. It can talk about, um leader or uh, mentorships you know we have all of these different ideologies up here you know i mean like it could be a therapist it could even be a community But I just like, I love the progression here because we kind of go from feeling a bit down and out over here and feeling like maybe you've been in that energy for a while to like this recognition of, you know, almost kind of like lighting your own fire, you know, deciding that you are going to get this thing Um, I want to say under control, but that's not the, the right word I want to use either. It's like, almost like I, I think I said it before, like facing, facing whatever this is for you. You know, facing those demons, right? And it's and this over here would say that there is help available for that. And then we have the star card, which is the card of hope and faith, right? Like grounded in the ethereal, but also in the 3D, like that space between. And the Eight of Swords between the Wheel of Fortune and um, the Star card. I mean, this, this is definitely, you know, like there's this feeling here of this is not necessarily going to be easy. You know, the Eight of Swords talks about kind of the self-imposed prison. Like we, we feel like we're stuck and we can't get out, you know, but our, our hands are free. We could 
get out if we if we wanted to and sometimes we don't want to but the option is there right And then the Wheel of Fortune, I always see the Wheel of Fortune as being a good thing. I don't care where it shows up, but it's, you know, the wheel turning in your favor. Things are starting to move. And that's because you didn't give up. That's what the Nine of Wands is. It's persistence, perseverance, right? Like you may have been through hell, but you're still here. Still standing, feeling a bit stronger even, the Eight of Pentacles, you know, putting in work. This could even be discovering what it is that um, you want to, it's almost like discovering a purpose. What do you want to focus your energy in on learning? Because that's what this is. It's like practice makes perfect. It could even just be putting in place a new practice through all of this. The Two of Pentacles talks about balance. Again, you know, like even talking about this chariot card, like everything in balance, right? And also, you know, like even just seeing the difference between the hanged man and the two of pentacles no longer in the tree but dancing among them right and then the ten of pentacles abundance legacy family community feeling good like getting to a good place ace of swords New perspectives, new ideas. The Hermit card after that, I mean, I could keep going. <laughs> the Hermit card after that, introspection. You know, like really, almost even, you know, like seeing yourself differently. A new perception of yourself and what you're doing and why you're doing it. Beautiful. I mean, like I said, you know, like it may not be an easy journey, but it seems like, you know, the time, the time has come, you know, I just heard, um, is it Rafigi in my head? It is time. It is time. Absolutely. Because that's what this Ten of Swords is talking about. It's kind of like out of options. There's there's no other there's no other way to do this anymore except for facing like heading straight towards this thing that um, has kept you in control or kept you under control. Whatever like and like I said, whatever that is for you. You know, I mean, it could be a thought process. It could be a behavior, right? You know? And then the help showing up and all of this beautifulness that kind of comes at the bottom of the deck here. You know, the 10 of pentacles that was way back there, that could even be a support group. Like that could just be, you know, the people around you having, having a, cause even with the nine of wands, you know, it almost kind of looks like there's this protective barrier around this could even be setting up boundaries, which is very much part of the healing process. 
So beautiful. I'm here for it. I'm here for you, Scorpio. Thank you so much for allowing me to read your cards. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.